quests are weird, right? And so am I, because rather than playing MMOs for the PvP or for raiding, I love playing them for the single player questing. Why? Because quests are a way of taking a broad, freeform world and distilling out of it a focused experience that fits seamlessly into that wider construct, and I'm a real sucker when it comes to integrating gameplay and story. Quests are a collection of little narratives and adventures that all come together to create a rich tapestry that only accentuates the play experience of the more player driven stuff. This observation brings up two important questions. If quests are designed to break up big diffuse experiences with smaller concentrated ones, how do you go about doing that well, and perhaps more importantly, why? Let's answer that one first. A quest pretty much began its life as a narrative device, to symbolise a character going on a journey culminating with them changing something about themselves or the world, and us being able to learn from them. The Prometheus myth is a classic quest narrative, with his quest for fire and subsequent punishment reminding us to be wary of the unforeseen consequences of success. Humans love telling stories, in particular ones with an adventure or quest involved, because they give context to the world and act as a repository of experiences and lessons we can draw from to contextualise our actions in the real world. Fast forward a few millennia and role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons get invented. D&D has a huge potential scope, there are stats and figures for just about everything, and the system is designed to be able to simulate pretty much whatever a good DM can come up with. Thing is, slaying goblins is all well and good, but without context it's impossible for players to really engage with the world, meaning they can't think about it creatively as all there is to go on is some numbers on a sheet meaning they'll lose out on all those additional mechanics and the opportunity to do bonkers shit like 4 Monks 1 Noodle Shop, Sir Barrington or any number of wonderful D&D stories I will put in the description. Quests work the same way in modern day games like Divinity Original Sin 2, which is probably the closest approximation to D&D we're likely to get in video game form. The game has a huge open world, a lot of cool mechanics and pretty much none of it means anything and is pretty boring without the context afforded by quests. Don't believe me? Let me lay out two 30 minute stretches of gameplay. Which one sounds more interesting? Fight some baddies, dodge a trap, and get some treasure? Or stumbling upon the drowned temple of the Orcish god, sunk by an insane demon worshipping cult. You track down the outpost belonging to the cult and, posing as one of their own, try to convince them to drop the water level and fail, forcing you to fight them. After killing them, the water level drops, and you meet a very confused crocodile who, if you can talk to animals, you learn quite liked hanging out in his new pool. Where the water go? Why does my head hurt so much? The temple itself is filled with deadly obstacles that annihilated the cultists, but can be skipped with the clever uses and spells, paving the way to a chat with the orcish god, who might be willing to part with a small slur of his power if you help him out of it. As you may or may not have guessed, they're the same stretch of gameplay but look how much a difference that context and direction gives to the experience. That's what a quest is all about. Guild Wars 2 takes this concept and runs with it. No matter where you go or which one of the game's many dynamic events you're doing, chances are you'll be going somewhere, collecting items, interacting with something or killing enemies, but each zone in the game is very clearly themed to give those mundane actions context and consequence. Each renowned heart is tied to a specific element of the world like a farm under siege or a weird magical testing ground, and rather than getting specific quests you just gain progress towards completing the heart by interacting with the world. The game actively rewards you for engaging with that context and fleshing out your understanding of the world in preparation for the meatier content in the form of the living world storyline quests and the dungeon. The best part is that the renowned hearts aren't even formal quests, they're just things lying around in the world for you to do, and they feel organic, helping players transition between broad, freeform open world exploration and more directed experiences seamlessly. It's for this reason that Guild Wars 2's actual main story quests feel stilted, awkwardly paced and, well, a bit rubbish, because they lack that sense of flow and easy cohesion, with most of the quests taking place inside special instant areas with very specific objectives, and they kind of feel at odds with the rest of the game. Now the observant people among you might have noticed that I mentioned the things you can do in Guild Wars in a very specific order. That's because, generally speaking, you'll usually do them in that order. Not just in Guild Wars, but in every MMO. You'll explore your way to a new area, expand into it and discover all the things it has for you to do, you'll exploit those mechanics to get rewards on items, 
and while you'll probably be fighting stuff intermittently throughout any zone, quest or quest chain, you'll usually finish one off by doing a big boss quest, killing a bunch of dudes or doing a dungeon, which usually involve exterminating baddies en masse. Hang on a sec, that's the same as the four X's of strategy game design. You're introduced to the world by exploring it, then you begin to understand it, leverage that understanding into progress before bringing it all together in order to wait a second. That's the Mario four step level design thing that Mark Brown went on about and then I went on about in a less interesting way. What the hell's going on? Alright, jokes aside, video game devs have worked out that the most efficient way to allow a story to be told is to let it manifest in four steps. An introduction, an expansion, a progression, and a finale, and no more is this true than in quests, which are themselves little mini stories as part of a wider world. Travelling or talky quests introduce you to the world, quests that involve collecting items or simple clicking on objectives teach you the mechanics and themes of the zone, quests that involve interacting with the world by using items, crafting things or utilising unique mechanics turn knowledge into understanding, and fighting quests are the tests of everything you've learned and a satisfying conclusion. For an example, let's take a look at World of Warcraft and the starting zone for the Wargun, specifically levels 1 to 5. You don't need to know much of what's going on here, a bunch of English people are under attack by savage hairy monsters, so typical Saturday night really. The first few quests are mostly travelling to different areas to progress the story, and then one multi-quest segment which involves evacuating houses and collecting some supplies. By the time you've reached about level 3.5, you would have been through 8 quests, 7 of them exploration or expansion quests, and you would have only done one kill quest, and even then it's more of a consequence of the other two you do at the same time. This pattern continues with the quests during and after the assault on Stoneward Prison, shifting the focus increasingly to interaction quests with the defend the objective mission and a bit where you get to use a dog to sniff out other larger dogs. As the introductory experience wraps up, we get a bunch of kill quests where you get to have fun with the cannon and make your final stand against the Wargun. Now that's not to say that quests should be handled exclusively in those four regimented steps, I mean you're doing explorationy, talking to people quests right up until the end, and I've already mentioned the kill quest right at the start, but note how the emphasis changes from gradual understanding to executing on that knowledge towards the finale as all the disparate elements get brought together. This trend repeats in the rest of the Wargun zones, and several times in pretty much every other zone in WoW. There's even specific zone quest lines which follow this pattern outlined on the map. It's the correct placement of these four kinds of quest, intro, expansion, understanding and finale, which really shapes how engaging the experience is and how good questing feels, even though on a mechanical level what you're doing is actually pretty boring. Speaking of boring, I really, really wanted to like Final Fantasy XIV, but my god could I just not get into the questing, and I didn't really understand why until I played games that got what questing was all about. On a purely quest by quest basis, Final Fantasy XIV is pretty similar to any MMORPG. All the four bases are covered and you'll be doing classic RPG things like collecting random junk, running around and slaying monsters. The issue comes in how these quests are used. The main story quests, which form a single contiguous narrative through the entirety of the levelling process, massively favour travelling slash talky quests, and take up a huge amount of time between cutscenes, dialogue and physically running to them. One section of questing in the mid 30s tasked me with running backwards and forwards across a big desert to do three simple quests, all of them killy ones, which led to me feeling like I was missing out on some crucial context or experience to really engage with what the quest was trying to get me to do. This is evident all over Final Fantasy XIV, because quest objectives are seemingly arbitrary, both in a narrative sense with the characters asking you prove yourself by doing chores more times than I can count, and in the sense that they don't flow thematically from stage 1 to 4. The story they're trying to tell, which I've been informed actually gets good somewhere close to max level, just isn't told effectively. And that's such a shame, because there's lots to like about certain aspects of Final Fantasy XIV's questing. The dungeon quests feel really great, and the leaf quests, which are specific, repeatable objectives which see you doing menial adventurer jobs, feel well placed within the world because their objectives are tailored to what you need to do, be it gathering, crafting or just straight up killing stuff, proving you don't need a 1 to 4 progression if your single step is placed correctly. Unfortunately, the main scenario quests are 90% exposition and never really let you interact with or understand the world you're in, jumping from people talking to full on boss fights at a moment's notice 
which leads to a game world which feels kind of hollow and artificial, just a space filled with objectives, not something to actually think about your interactions with, no matter how good the writing in the quest text is. Counter that with a surprising addition to this video, RuneScape. I'm hesitant to recommend the game because it's grindy as all hell and it's got some pretty aggressive pay to win, but my god is the questing fantastic. Let's look at one of my favourite early game quests from my limited time with the game, The Knight's Sword. The first step, the introduction, sees you finding a squire who's lost his master's sword and getting the deets about it, as well as offering to help. The squire points you in the direction of a librarian who might know where the sword's mythical smith lives. The second part of the quest, us expanding our knowledge, sees us talking to the librarian who tells us the smith died in a big war, but a relative of his is alive and he's famously fond of red berry pie. Eventually you get directions, but not a quest objective marker, the librarian actually tells you to go to the southern peninsula of Asgarnia, one of the game's countries, requiring some actual lore research and in-game knowledge. The second part of the quest concludes with you finding the dwarf, who won't speak to you because he hates outsiders. The third stage, where we develop an increased understanding of the world, sees us having to make some red berry pie something that we could have made at any point using the cooking skill, it's right there. Or you can just buy one from the Grand Exchange, don't tell anyone, Shh. Followed by you giving it to him so he becomes your friend. The dwarf says that the all he needs is in a nearby dungeon, but it's full of monsters. The fourth and final stage of the quest is technically a combat adventure, but it's optional, with you having to dodge some ice monsters to get to the ore and mine it. These guys could kick the crap out of any new player, so the tension of an actual fight was still there, even if I didn't actually do much of it. Then you go back to the dwarf, smith yourself a sword, and return it for some smithing experience, and the knowledge of how to use that special ore, because that's what you learned in the quest. Ah, oh, it's so good! This one quest makes you interact with the world as a living, breathing entity within it, and it teaches you so much. Like the location of a cool dungeon you can go back to later, how to make pie, which requires quite a few complicated steps, some lore, and even unlock some new flavour-appropriate recipes. Nearly every quest in RuneScape is like this, they're all little isolated episodes that set themselves up, have satisfying payoffs, and you can walk away from with a thematically appropriate reward and having learned something new, or just have some new information and skills to play with. The game as a whole has… issues? But I think every MMO has something to learn from RuneScape, which has some quests which are older than most games that still manage to feel like a cool, well-paced experience. While not every game has quests, and not every game needs to pull a Mario and stick rigidly to the four-step storytelling method, designers do need to realise that even if their games aren't narrative focused, they still tell a story. The story of the player's experience and quest to gradually master the game and beat it. You can have all the rights you like and the best level design, but unless that gets used in a way that creates a well-paced experience for the player, they're not going to be able to understand it as effectively and perhaps more importantly, they won't learn to play as well either. And for the players, the next time you think about critiquing a quest design because it feels like a chore, try and think about why you feel that way. Because at the end of the day, every quest is kind of a chore, but it can become something much more meaningful when used as part of the right experience in the right context. Perhaps the quest has interrupted the flow of the story, or maybe it feels like it's holding your hand too much or maybe it's dropped you into the deep end with no idea of what's going on. No quest can really be viewed in isolation, because they're all just parts of the greater whole that is the game. In that vein, as a special reward for listening all the way through, I'm willing to part with two gold pieces and a pair of Marksman's Braces of the Chinchilla. What the? Don't knock it, that's plus 12 agility, you ungrateful bastard. Ugh, typical. This video was made possible thanks to my wonderful Patreon people, who are responsible for this stuff getting made and filling the void where my self-esteem should be. If you'd like to become my patron, you'll get some special stuff like early access to videos, Q&As, reviews and the opportunity to go some way towards ending the crushing futility of my life. Wow, this got dark out of nowhere, what the fuck? Of course, the biggest thank you goes to my top tier $10 mysterious benefactors. Samuel van der Plaats, Patrick Romberg, Vodjam Palagora, Alex Deloch, Dirk Jan Karenbeld, Joseph Robson, Joshua Binswanger, Lunar Eagle 1996, Daniel Metjes, Strasger in Ultima, Asaran, Brian Notariani, Baxter Heel, Jonathan Kirkinson, and Chow. 
Thank you for your patience in waiting for this video, my Final Fantasy XIV footage got corrupted and I had to play a bunch more of it, so uh, apologies for the wait, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!